Well, good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? Hi, Renee and Diane and Tyne and who I never say your name right. Uh, Rita, Lucy, Linda, it's great to see you all. Thank you for being here live or for watching the recording if that's what you are doing. Uh, my name is Ali Manning, uh, Vintage Page Designs, and around here we uh, make handmade books and then dream up ways to fill them. So that's what I shall be doing today. Um, assisted by Amber Weaver, who is, sorry, I'm just getting comfortable, who um, is going to be in the comments, um, finding questions um, for me to answer from you and, you know, providing you any links that you need. So um, thank you, Amber, for being here. I appreciate it. And um, today's topic to go inside your journal is um, something called image transfer with wintergreen oil. So some of you may have tried this. If you've tried it, let us know in the chat and um, let us know how you found it. Um, but if it's new to you, hopefully you will learn something today. Um, I will be running through some safety precautions, um, some tips on the kind of paper to use. Um, what else will I, I have a list? Um, where to find it and um, what else? Just some um, just some tips so that you have some success and don't spend you know hours and hours experimenting like I did. So, what is wintergreen oil? It is it is an essential oil, and it's made from wintergreen leaves, and they are um, steamed. They're made wet, and then steam is passed through them and then the essential oil is the steam that drips off them. It is um, some, there are some safety precautions that you need to take and I'm actually just going to pop them on screen because I really, let's just, oh no, that's, that is not what I want to do. Let's see, uh, let me just pop those on the screen for a second. Here we go. Um, you can see my notes at the bottom there. So it is considered dangerous to swallow or ingest wintergreen oil. So I really um, would suggest, obviously I don't think anyone here is gonna drink it, but keep it away from pets and children. Um, and I would also suggest wearing gloves because it is an essential oil and essential oils are absorbed into our skin. So we'll be using this neat so it will get into your bloodstream. I don't think a small amount doing this would necessarily be dangerous, but let's not take any chances. And you know how it is, you go down a rabbit hole and like three hours later, you're still doing the same technique. So I wouldn't want you to have excessive amounts of this in your system and feel unwell. So I would definitely wear gloves and no drinking. Um, in terms of um, what it's like, it actually, um, well, it depends if you like the smell of mint. Your house will wind up smelling like a toothpaste factory after using this. So I would also suggest opening a window because it, like it's pleasant at first, but then after a while you're like, I can't even stand it anymore. So your house will smell either like a toothpaste factory or like a chewing gum factory. So um, that's just a little bit of background. Um, where to buy this um, essential oil? Um, to get this large bottle, which is how many ounces? Hmm, I can't see on there. I'm not sure how many ounces, it's quite a few ounces. It doesn't say on here. Um, I bought this online and Amazon and I included a link underneath the description um, to uh, Amazon in the US, but I'm sure you can find it in Amazon in Canada and uh, Europe. So um, you can buy it online or you can buy it in health food stores or in like um, Whole Foods, places like that. And you can also buy it from um, essential oil suppliers. There's uh, one called Rose something. I can't remember what it's called, but just Google essential oils and you'll be able to um, purchase wintergreen oil. I only ever see it as wintergreen oil. I never see any different types. So you know, like with lavender, there's different types of lavender. I've only ever seen one type for this. Um, this technique that I'm gonna show you today I have only found works with wintergreen oil. I have tried it with peppermint oil and lavender. And while I got some transfer of ink, it was just no way near as successful as with the wintergreen oil. Um, and I wasn't willing to experiment a whole lot more, to be honest, because those other oils are very expensive. This large bottle, I wish I could see how many ounces it was. Oh, 
four fluid ounces. This four fluid ounce bottle was $12.99 US dollars, which is inexpensive for essential oils. Um, peppermint oil is not super expensive, but uh, lavender can be really expensive. So I wasn't willing to use a lot of very expensive essential oils to keep practicing. So you may have better luck with different essential oils. So that's just a personal choice if you want to try them. But I really like, I have had good success with the wintergreen um, and it is inexpensive. So um, let's flip down to my desk and I will give you a few more tips and I will show you the process that I go through to transfer images. If you do have questions, feel free to pop them in the chat and then we will get to those questions at the end. Although you may find I answer some of those questions as I'm talking. So just give me a minute to get down to my desk. Let's take me. There we go. Okay. So this only works with color photocopies, this uh, method. So last week we were working with magazines, well not color photocopies, laser copies. So from a copy shop, either color or black and white image um, on the laser copy machine, or it may work from your home laser printer, whether that be color or black and white. Um, it does not work with inkjet and it does not work with magazines. So last week, if you remember, we did image transfer with contact paper. See that shiny there? There's a link to that video below. Um, and there's also a link to the fabric transfer video I have done. So for this wintergreen tech oil technique to work, just laser prints or photocopies. You need to remember with this method that the text is reversed. So let me find an example. Oh, it's over here. The text will be reversed. I'm sure you believe me, but I'll just show you. I've got a whole bunch of my samples here. Don't know if you can see that. There's some text right here. That's probably too difficult to see. Right here, here's some text. Um, the text is reversed. So you will need to, um, when you're copying, flip the image uh, before you make a copy. Um, what kind of paper is this technique gonna work on? Let me tell you first of all what it does not work on. This is a slightly slick paper. This is a Mohawk Supervine paper, and it's got a slight slickness to it. And I find that slick papers, this one does work, but what tends to happen is when you do the technique, the, the ink sits on top of the paper because it's slick, and then it tends to smudge as you're burnishing. So you can see some smudging right there. It will not work with deli paper, that is too slick. It won't work with gessoed pages either. So, um, because again, the ink just sits on the top and it is not absorbed into the um, paper, which is kind of surprising with gesso because um, that's like an absorbent ground, but for this technique, it just doesn't work. Perhaps it's the oil there that is not helping. So you may be wondering, well, what does work? Well, vintage paper works. Um, any kind of paper with a tooth. So this is a, gosh, what is it? This is a printmaking paper, about a 90 pound printmaking paper. This is also a printmaking paper. Watercolor paper works really well. This is watercolor paper. Mixed media paper would work. Even drawing paper, but it has to have a slight tooth to the surface. This is like a smooth, this is, it's not a hot press watercolor paper, um, but it's not very rough. So you can use textured rough paper, which let me give you where's an example of that. So this here is a fairly textured paper. Let me find, well, you probably can't see it because the print's here. This is a fairly textured watercolor paper um, and that works, but also slightly smoother watercolor paper will work, but it, it needs to have some kind of tooth to it. Um, and again, you're just going to do lots of experiments to find which is the right paper. So like me, you're going to have lots of pieces of small pieces of paper, go through your, you know, your scraps and practice, practice with lots of different types of paper until you find the kind that you like. But the direction I'm sending you in is toothy, 
toothy kind of paper. It's not the thickness so much that you worry about, it's that it has some kind of tooth. So it's in printmaking, watercolour, mixed media or drawing. Um, you are going to want to do this method of image transfer on a separate piece of paper because, let me just show you, it bleeds through. So I did this in a sketchbook. It bleeds through to the other side. So if you don't mind that, then, well, in fact, it goes through to this side and this side too. If you don't mind the bleed through, then by all means, um, go for it. But you can see here, it bleeds through to the other side of the paper. So I generally do my prints on a separate piece of paper and then glue them to my journal or wherever I'm going to be using it. So you can see here it's come all the way through. Another reason you would do it on a separate piece of paper is because you may notice yellowing around the edge, which you may not mind, but if it bothers you and you're doing it inside a book, and some papers it yellows, some it doesn't. So this one here didn't really yellow. This one here, this creamy colored printmaking paper did not yellow, but this lighter one did. So again, you're just gonna experiment, experiment, experiment. Um, but my main advice is to do it on a separate piece of paper. All right, let's get to it. I'm sure you're sick of looking at all my examples. You wanna see how I do it. Let's make sure I have everything here and find my glove. I'm only going to put, here we go, it's my glove. I'm going to start out by laying um, some paper towels. I just put a couple layers of paper towels on my work surface because the oil is going to come through and it will get on your whatever surface you're working on. I just, I don't particularly want this smelling of oil forever. Let's pop on. Um, are there any questions, Amber, before I, while I just get set up that pertain to um, what I just said? Is this thing using citrus solve? No, it is not. Oh, no. Well, actually, 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 I have never done. So I only use, so, God, how long does it take? I'll take, put a glove on. I've never used Oh, look what I just did, for heaven's sake. You know, I'll do it without the gloves, but um, do what I do, not do what I say, not as I do. So I've only ever done altering images with um, Citrusolve. So the National Geographics, I go in and alter the image. I've never done image transfer with Citrusolve. So um, I guess that'll be my next thing to experiment with. I do have some at home. So um, watch this space, and if you, know that it does work, then please let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. Any other questions, Anne, before I hop in to doing the demo? Nope. Okay, great. Okay, so first step, put on gloves. Remember, I'm wearing gloves. I'm only doing one transfer, so I'm not concerned that a lot is going to absorb into my skin. If I was about to sit down for a three-hour um, session, I would go get another pair of gloves. Put my gloves on, lay down my paper towels, where is the image? I'm going to use this image here. So I have been, um, oh no, actually, I want, I think I want this image here. Um, I went to the desert for the first time last year to this uh, park of Joshua trees. And so I'm doing a journal about that. So here is one image that I've already done. And um, I'm going to do this, this image right here. I'm going to use for my substrate, this is a piece of hmm, Stonehenge printmaking paper. So it's fairly smooth, but it's got some tooth. Now you'll notice that I've left a border around this. And the reason I've left a border is so I can tape it down at the top here or the sides where this white space is. So I'm going to lay this face down. It's a bit messy on the back. Lay it face down and I'm going to put some tape where these white areas are. And this is just going to stop it slipping around, which may smudge my ink. So let's just put, but I want the tape not on the image. I want it on the outside. So let me just make sure I don't get it on my image. That one's fine. So tape, this is just scotch tape. Let me just turn that slightly. And then I'm gonna, you're gonna need several cotton pads. 
um, and they can be these flat ones or the balls, it doesn't matter. You could probably even use paper towel, but I find these absorb more. Here's the um, wintergreen oil. It does have a safety cap on, which is good. And I find, sorry, <laughs> I find if I put this on top and tip it upside down, do it like three times. So once, twice, three times, that gives me enough oil on there to start out, put my cap on, because you know that will go everywhere. And we're not aiming to soak, sorry, I'm just gonna um, mute myself a second. Okay, we don't want to soak this because if we soak it, what's going to happen is we're going to get smudginess. So we just want to put a layer over it. So put a nice layer of the wintergreen oil over the top such that you can see it, the image come through underneath. This image is face down. Let's put a nice amount on there actually going to just lift up one edge because we're going to want to lift up the image. So there's just a nice layer of wintergreen oil on there. And then you're going to burnish it. So there's a couple, there was lots of ways you could burnish. I'm going to use um, my bone folder. I'm also going to use a an old uh, gift card or credit card. So I like to go in, if you've got one of these Teflon bone folders with a square end, it's actually really nice. And I'm using my phone to film, but if we had put the stopwatch on, you'll see that this process does not take very long. So burnish, burnish, burnish. If this wasn't live, it's, this is probably the point where I would speed things up, but it actually, it's kind of good that we're not, that we're live so that you can actually see how quick this goes. So I'm burnishing fairly hard. Now, let's just see where we're at. Let's carefully lift it up at the corner and see. Okay, that's, that's a good start. Can you see that? That's a good start. Now, we're going to do the same thing again. Actually, let me just give it a little bit more of a burnish with the edge of this card. I'm just going back and forth. You could also use a spoon. Depends how large the image is. If you've got a little tiny one, you could... Um, or just use a little teaspoon or something. Okay, so that's one layer of wintergreen oil plus some burnishing. Let's see, let's try and keep the tape in place. That's not bad, but I would like a clearer image. So let's put another layer of oil. It's best to do lots of thin layers rather than, you know, one thick layer. So I'm going to put some more oil on here. Just one or two passes. Throw that away now. And I'm going to go in again and I'm going to burnish. Go up and down. If there were certain areas when I flipped the image over, if there were certain areas that were particularly white or spotty, you know, I could go in and give them extra attention. You are going to want to, once this is done, you're going to want to allow your images to dry overnight. As I mentioned before, you're going to want to open the window as well, probably. I'll put a fan on because this smells strong. Okay. Let's give it a burnish. This might be enough. Two passes. We might need to do a third one, which is perfectly fine. Carol asked, does the oil soaked paper rip? No, not at all. And this is copier paper. Um, hi, hi Tara, hi Claudia. All right, let's lift this up and see how we're doing. Ooh, now that's looking pretty good. I've left the tape on the top. That looks pretty nice. But I still, so you can see the original, I still like a little more of this blue showing. So I am gonna do one more layer of oil. So and then see, um, see if I can't just get that a little bit more vibrant. 
and the lid on. So one more layer of oil. You can see my paper's not ripping. And then ooh, let's go in. Now, where was it? I think it was up in this the sky. I wanted more um, of the pigment to come through. So I'm I'm pressing pretty hard here. Like I'm sort of a 45 degree angle. I could also go like this with my bone folder if I wanted to along the side. You know, whatever you whatever tool feels comfortable to you. It's no right or wrong. I just happen to like this end piece. All right, let's do some more down here. Let's get this card. And I'll show you a few more examples of the desert pictures that I've done. Okay, I think that's going to be it. So let's carefully use the tip of this to lift it up. I'm happy with that now. I could do a little more down here, particularly you find along the edges is where perhaps you need to just do, you know, give it a little more attention to get all the pigment into your paper. But I am really, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and you may wonder why do, why would you even do this method? You could just stick these photographs right in your book. But I just happen to like this kind of grungy method. And let's think we don't just have to leave it like this. We could um, do some altering on this. So we could go in with pens. Um, I could go with pens or pencils and um, augment this. I could add some rubber stamping. I could add acrylic paint. I could put a glaze over this, like a sepia glaze if I wanted to. I could alter the photo on my computer before I had it printed, which would be really kind of fun. Add text to it as long as it was reversed. So just because I've taken a straight photo doesn't mean you just have to work with a straight photo. You could work with images from the graphics fairy um, that you size to whatever size you would like. Just make sure it's a laser image. Um, so I, I'm going to leave this to dry. Um, I would leave it overnight. Let's look on the back. You can see it's bleeding through, and that's going to stay like that. That's not going to go away. Um, if I, Am I going to get the yellow around the edge? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, let's, let me show you one. If you're just joining us, um, sometimes you will get yellow around the edge once it's dry. Uh, but this one did not do that, so... Go figure, you never do quite know, depends on how much oil you use and on the paper you're using. So I'm gonna allow this to dry and I'm also, was this the one I was using? I'm gonna allow this to dry because this image is also really cool. So let me um, set those to one side. So here are, the, here are some oops, photographs that, this was the original printed image and I, transferred them onto my paper right there. And then this was what was left. So I think that's also pretty cool. And uh, we were talking earlier about the Citrusolve technique of um, altering images. This is sort of, could be, uh, is this kind of similar type of thing. So I think both of these look pretty neat. I might just use them for different things. I'm certainly not gonna throw these away. That's for, for darn sure. But once it's dry, nothing comes off. And the same with this. Nothing comes off it, and um, even if this gets wet, so you could put wet medium over the top, and this ink is not going to run. So that is good. And remember, you know, you don't have to just use a white substrate. You could use vintage papers. Just use a substrate which is absorbent and not a slick one. Let me just grab something to wash my hands with, and then um, I will answer any of your questions because I have to go. Um, well, I have to go do more image transfers. All right. Um, let me see. What questions are there? So Anne says she loves the effect. It looks like a soft painting. It does. It's kind of painterly, Anne. I do really like that effect. What questions we have, Anne? Bash, we pop them up on the screen. Do the prints continue to smell? It's a good question. Let me... 
smell one that I did last week. See if I can. Yes, they do. Yeah, this one um, I did last week, about a week ago. Still smells. I mean, it's not unpleasant. It's a bit strong. I bet you after, if it was, you know, weeks and weeks, it might dissipate. So good question, though. What other questions? Could you use vellum? No. I tried. I tried on vellum. I tried on deli paper. Um, they're too slick. The surface is too slick. The ink just slides around. So, I mean, you'd probably get something interesting, but it wouldn't be the image. It would just be sort of inky mess. So good question, though. What other question? Do any other oils work? Um, I have found, I only tried two others. I tried lavender and peppermint. I didn't find them to be successful. I got some ink off them, but not a full image. It was just sort of some color. I didn't get um, solid, um, you know, images like this. I just got some kind of blues and some greens. But I've read online that some people have luck with oils, um, particularly citrus oils. Personally, I've just never had luck with them. So um, maybe they're using some special kind or some inexpensive kind. I'm not sure. But personally, I have not had luck with other oils. What other questions are there? Does the paper you work on get oily? Um, no, once it's dry, it's not oily. Let me just, I'm just going to double check. No, it's smooth. The, um, the images, the, the um, original image that was laying down, this is oily. This feels, has got, was that the one I was just using? No, this does have some oily texture to it. Um, but the image, you know, the transferred image now, smooth as the babies, you know what? Good question though. What other questions are there? Any others? Does this work if you do a coated image? No, I don't think so. My images are from a photocopier and it was um, just the color photocopier paper that's in a copy machine. Um, so it, it wasn't coated, it was smooth, but I don't think it would work with coated, but I haven't tried it with coated paper. So let me know. My thought is it wouldn't, but um, please let me know if you try it. I'd be very curious to know. What else? What else? Any other question? Can the print image be used more than one time? Well, ain't that a good question? Should we try? All right, let me flip my camera down. And we'll try it. My, my instinct is not. Well, actually, why not? I bet you it could. Should we? try on here so this is this is um from another i did a few days ago and it's completely dry so let's try and do it oh, good lord there we go should we try again let's see if we can get anything off this I'm not seeing anything. Interesting. Let's try burnishing that. No, nothing is coming off there. So I think I sacked it dry of uh, um, ink. So no, I think it's a one shot deal. Whoops, pardon me. They fell off my yoga ball. Let me um, switch my I know. <laughs> well, any other questions? I'd be happy to answer them. Can you use this method on fabric? I haven't tried, but I bet you could. I bet you could because, and if I were gonna do that, I would say, so obviously I have to do this afterwards. I would say wash it to get the sizing out and then I would use 100% cotton. I'd use a tight weave. Although if you use a loose weave, um, it would just give you some texture. Um, and then I would somehow tape the fabric down so it's like a little bit taut um, and then tape the image down. But I, I would, would be willing to put money on fabric would work. I'll let you know. What else? Um, what's this? 
what Marsha says, what is the advantage of this transfer method over the others? Um, I don't know if it has an advantage really, it's just a different look. So let me um, flip my camera down. Let's look through my book of image transfers and we can just see different looks that you can get. It's definitely a, just a more grungy look. Um, it certainly smells better too. So um, uh, is there a particular advantage? Not, not really. Um, so that's, so if you, here's my little book of transfers. If you're gonna use the, the um, contact paper, it has an almost shiny look to it and a transparent look, which is a, a look. Here's another one from last week. This is shiny and transparent but it's very clear. The image is really, really clear, right? You can see that, sorry about the shine. Here's, um, underneath is the contact paper transfer and here is matte medium transfer onto fabric. Again, a lot clearer. Um, this is transparent, this one is not because it's on muslin. So just compare it to this, it's just a completely different look. It's just, you know, it's whatever you're going for. It's contact paper again, contact paper again. So shiny versus, and here's a fabric one again. So this one is not translucent. This is matte, hence, well, with matte medium. So, but you can tell this, this is very detailed with, um, you know, clear lines. And this is, you know, a lot more, a lot more grungy looking. So, but that's a great question, Marsha. Um, and it just depends what your end goal is and the look that you're going for with your book, I would say. Any other questions? Maria asks, are the images printed on text weight paper? Does it make a difference or does it work if we use heavier paper for the print? Um, I, the only prints I have, the only paper I've used to do this is like inexpensive copier paper, but I don't see why it wouldn't work if you wanted to print them on heavier, more expensive paper. It'd just be, I'm just not sure why you would. Um, although, well, because the resulting image that's left will also look really cool. So um, as long as, a, as it's a laser copy, then um, you can use thicker paper. Yeah, for sure. Um, and if you were then were going to use the resulting, you know, the the original print in something else, then I guess that would be advantage. Just this does have a residue on it, so you may want to cover it with something, maybe some matte medium too, or some cover up this sort of residue in some way. Um, so yes, I think you can use thicker paper if you would like to. Is the answer. Any other questions? Oh, Jill. Oh, what possessed me to ever think trying essential oil? Oh, this is not, I didn't make this up. Um, it's been around for ages, this um, type of image transfer. And I think it was a book club member who reminded me last year. I think Mary Roth um, did a book and she's like, oh, these are my um, image transfers with wintergreen. And I was like, oh, I've forgotten that method. So I dug, I dug out my wintergreen oil and tried it. So, so yeah, I'm not, I can't claim it's my credit, but it's my idea. So. Um, but yeah, it was Mary who reminded me of it. What, anything else? Any other questions? Nope. Oh, we're all set. <laughs> so, um, oh, I see Noreen asked one actually. What kind of printer did you use to print your photos? The original photographs just were from CVS and then I took them to Staples um, and used their color copy machine at Staples to print the images. Um, and then hold on one more. Sorry, Amber. Um, it's wintergreen oil, Judy, if you uh, missed that. Um, scientific method said you refer to ink, but laser print is toner. Yes, it is toner. You are correct. Um, all right. Well, I think that's it for today. It was a short and sweet one because um, I have to go make more images now and, and create my book. So um, we will be back here next Thursday at noon. 
Um, it's going to be a surprise what we're doing because I don't actually know yet, but we'll think of something fun for us to do. If you um, are a Hamley Book Club member, which I know many of you are, don't forget that we have Organising Corner tomorrow um, evening. Um, I think it's like at 6 p.m. Eastern, something like that, but um, you've already had an email confirmation. So I hope to see lots of you there. We'll be doing studio tours and talking about organising your desk space. Um, and if you try this method please feel free to um, share on Instagram. Let me just show you, there we go. Uh, feel free to um, tag us on Instagram and um, at Vintage Page Designs to um, show us what you make. And um, if you uh, like this, please give this video a like and subscribe and hit the notification button so that you know um, when the next video is going to be. All right, my friends, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Miriam. It's great to see you and um, we'll catch you next week. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.